I'm going to show you how to start and work a null binded project. I'm going to be doing it in the finish 2-2, but most of what I'm going to be showing you is applicable to uh, most of the stitches, and I will explain uh, the times when I'm doing it specifically for the finish 2-2. I will also show you a couple of mistakes that you might make and how to find and correct them. So I have about probably two yards of yarn on my needle right now and I have doubled it back and put it through my uh, needle so that I don't have to pull all two yards through every time I do a stitch. And so to start with, and this is just one of many starts, but it's my favorite, you're going to make a small overhand knot at the end of your uh, piece of yarn. So we're gonna do that. You make a small loop like so, and then fold the tail end back and put it through that loop. And that right there, is an overhand knot, do not pull it tight. That's not what we're doing here. We're not pulling this tight, we're leaving this loop. And I want a little bit more of an end, so I'm gonna slide it down a little bit. So that's a good amount of an end, a couple inches like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to slide this little loop onto our thumb. And you want it so that the little short tail is off to the right and the long tail's off to the left. I'm just gonna pull on this a little to tighten it up. We want it snug around our thumb. We don't want it super tight, but we want it snug. And then you want the tail, the long tail that's going to your needle to go across your thumb from the left to the right. You do not want it crossing your thumb behind because you're not gonna make a loop that way. So you want it to cross in front of your thumb. And you also want it to lay below that first loop that you just put on there. So to get started, we need to put several loops on our thumb. In this case, for the finish 2-2, we wanna start with four loops on our thumb. And so we're gonna make those all going through this same loop. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our needle and pass it underneath that loop and we're going to do it top down and sort of from right to left. But before I do that, we need to make sure that our loop stays on our thumb. And this is just for when you're starting out. So what I like to do is I take both of the pieces of yarn and I sandwich them between a couple of my fingers like so. And this will help keep everything snug on your thumb as you're doing this. You may not need to hold both ends, you may just need to hold the short end, but um, I like to hold both ends. Okay, so now everything's nice and snug. What we're going to pass the needle, top down, behind the, the loop on our thumb. And then we're gonna pull all the way through, and then you're gonna have to let go And we're gonna pull that tight. And you'll see that there's gonna be a little cross. Just push that a little bit out of the way, but make sure that the loop that you just made is below the first loop. So this is the first loop that we slipped on our thumb, and this is the loop that we just made, and it should be below it. Every new loop that you make in null binding should be below the prior loop on your thumb. Okay, so let's do that again. Make sure your long tail is passing over your thumb. And then I'm not gonna hold on to this tail this time. I'm just gonna hold on to the short tail. And you're gonna go underneath the loop on your thumb. And you're also gonna go underneath the tail end. There are some stitches in all binding where you don't go underneath the tail end, but uh, in this one you do. Come on. There we go. Okay. So I want to slide those crosses back around to the back. Make sure I have everything in order. 
and you can kind of tug a little on your um, your long end here and it'll tighten up the bottom loop. If it tightens up not the bottom loop, then you need to move that loop to the bottom. So if this were up here and I tightened it, we know that that guy, he belongs down here because newest loop always goes on the bottom. Okay, so I need four loops on my thumb. So one more time, we're gonna do that. And I didn't hold on to the short tail this time and you'll see that it got caught up in there. That's okay, just pop it back out. And we're gonna slide that little twist around to the back. So now we have four loops on our thumb and they all have about the same amount of tension. They're all relatively snug, but not too snug on my thumb. And now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start making our stitches. Now this first stitch I'm gonna show you is only applicable the first time and then it's gonna be a little different. So the finish 2-2 is called 2-2 because you pick up two loops from behind your thumb. So you saw I just took the top two loops off of my thumb and onto my needle like so. And with these two loops still on your needle, and you'll notice I'm pinching things to keep them in place, you're going to then slide the needle underneath the two remaining loops on your thumb and also your working tail. So this is called the finish 2-2 because you're going through two loops behind the thumb and behind two loops that are on the thumb. And then notice that I'm pinching my needle between my finger and my thumb don't pinch so hard that you can't move your thread, but it really helps to pinch that thread just a little bit because that'll help keep everything on your thumb. A lot of times if you don't pinch it, all of your loops will just sort of fly right off of your thumb. So just make sure that you gently pinch to keep everything in place. Okay. So on this first go around, you may not know, be able to tell the difference between these two loops, but that's okay. I'll show you how to tell the difference in the next couple of stitches. All right, so this is the finish 2-2 two -two stitch um, that we're gonna use going forward. So what you're going to do, on the last stitch, we picked up two threads, but that was because, or two loops, sorry, but that was because we didn't have any loops behind our thumb now. Now that we have two loops behind our thumb, we are only going to pick up one loop off of our thumb. And you'll also notice you have three loops left on your thumb, right? So we always wanna make sure there's two left um, before we go down. So pick up the top loop, and then we're gonna pick up one of those loops that are sitting behind the thumb. And in this case, it's a little hard to tell which one's the newest loop, so we're not gonna care, we're just gonna guess. Um, so with those two loops on your needle, swivel it around and go down behind the two loops left on your thumb. And again, remember to go underneath your tail end as well, the tail end that's about to become your newest loop. So I'm gonna do a couple of stitches on camera um, without doing any explanation. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit um, about recognizing what loops are what, because it's really important that you keep your loops in order at all times and knowing which of the back loops you're supposed to pick up. But it'll be a little easier once I have a little bit of a tail going. And I also need to let a little bit out of my needle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip this guy right off and I'm gonna fix this. Okay, so I 
changed how the thread was on my needle really quick just so that I have more of the single yarn. And I'm gonna slide it back on my thumb. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to do this, but I don't wanna show you quite yet because I wanna have more of a end deep first before I show you how to do this. Okay. Okay. All right, so I've worked a number of stitches, and first of all, you're gonna notice that this doesn't really look like knot binding at all. That's okay, we haven't pulled uh, the tension out yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold these top loops, I'm gonna pinch right here, and then I'm gonna grasp it right here, and I'm just gonna, like so. Don't worry about the bottom loops. Um, we fix those when we get to the end, or you can fix them at any point, but you're not gonna be able to pull all of the uh, excess out of all of these right now. So don't worry about it. Okay, so we've got a little bit of our null binding going here. So the first thing I wanna show you how to do is to pick this up because you're gonna wanna set this down quite a bit. And I want to show you that you can kind of see what's going on here. If you push your loops, just sort of gently push your loops up like so, you can see this interesting spiral pattern that's happening, right? It's less obvious down here where everything's already tightened up a bit, but where it's up here where it's a little loose, um, you can see that spiral pattern. So you've got a tail like this and you need to put it back on your thumb. So how do you do that? It helps, first of all, if you remember what stitch you were working on and you know that it's a finished 2-2, then you know you need to pick up the top three loops. But if you don't remember, an easy way to tell how many loops you need to have on your thumb is to come down here and look for the loops that your tail end is going through. So in this case, our tail end is going through these two loops right here. So we know that those loops need to be behind our thumb because they have a, a piece of yarn passing through them. These loops do not have any yarn passing through them yet. These guys are free. So these three we want on our thumb. And you can also see the order of oldest to newest. So this is the oldest loop, and then this is the middle loop, and this is the newest loop. So when you put them on your thumb, you want the newest loop at the bottom and the oldest loop at the top. And then you can make sure you've got that newest loop down at the bottom by pulling on your tail end, and you'll feel it tighten up. And then just make sure that your back loops are open and they're not like tucked down underneath sometimes that happens so just pull them up gently tug don't tug too hard just to make sure that they're easily um, accessible and then you can just continue working picking up the top loop picking up a loop behind the thumb and then going down underneath the two loops left on your thumb and your tail end so if you get your loops on your thumb out of order, how will you know? So we're gonna take a look at the loops on our thumb. So first of all, you'll notice that all of the loops make a cross here and they make a cross here. But if you follow each loop back, so let's take a look at the top loop. If you follow it all the way back to where it's coming out of the work, you will see that it's coming out the furthest down the work. So this is the end of the work, and this is the work that's already been done. So let's say this is the back end of the work, 
and this is the front end of the work. So the oldest loop is going to be furthest down the back end of the loop, or the work, sorry. And then the middle loop, well, he just hangs out in the middle. And the newest loop will be coming from within the two loops that are directly behind your thumb. So you see, that's your newest loop. So you can always identify it by looking back at these two loops right behind your thumb and look and see what the piece of yarn going through them, where it comes out. So this is actually our tail end. Our newest loop is that one right underneath there, right below our tail end. So tail end loop, newest loop, and you can't really see the next two, so you kind of look at them from this side where they're coming out, all right? And the same thing on this side, you'll notice that the oldest loop passes underneath the two newer loops and it's coming out the furthest down or the furthest towards the back of our work. And our newest loop is the one that's going through the two um, loops at the back. So it's really important that these always be in order. If they get out of order, your work is not going to look quite right. So it's really important that you learn to recognize that your loops are in order. And as you go along, you will develop a feel for making sure that this newest loop always tightens up at the bottom. And you'll also develop a feel for making sure that your loops are snug enough on your thumb that they don't slide out of place. So sometimes what happens though, is that this loop pops off and you go like that. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute, what just happened? I have only two loops on my thumb and where are the loops behind my thumb? I don't know, understand what's going on. So what first thing you wanna do is tug a little on your tail end and you can see there's the loop right there. So always just start at the tail end and follow your tail end back. So first of all, we follow it back and we're like, oh, there's a loop right there. If there's a loop, it should probably be on your thumb. So put that back guy back on there. That's one of the main things that's gonna happen is that you're accidentally going to make that loop not on your thumb. So the next thing that you might get a little confused about is the loops behind your thumb. So if we look at the loops behind our thumb, we see that there are a couple that are loose. We're only concerned with, well, we're really only concerned with this one. We're not gonna be doing anything with this guy yet. So first of all, to identify these top loops, you can look at the left. I'm gonna move these guys out of the way for a moment. So on the left side of your thumb, follow the tail end back and look for the loops that it's worked through. So we see it's been worked through the middle of these two loops. So we know that these are the top two loops that should be behind our thumb. So the next question is, what is the topmost loop that's behind our thumb? Because we're only going to be picking up one that's behind our thumb, picking up the one that's off the top of our thumb and then the one behind our thumb. So. We're gonna just sort of gently pull these guys apart and you're gonna look at these loops as they go in. You're gonna see the oldest goes in down here. In the middle, he goes in in between the two loops and the newest, he goes in in front of the right side of this loop. So you see it kind of goes in from the right side and then out on the left side. So oldest, between the third and second loop, middle between the second and first loop, and the newest goes in front of the newest loop. So that's how you can identify which is the newest loop behind your thumb. And so we now know 
this that's the newest loop so we want to pick up top loop off of our thumb and that loop the newest loop behind our thumb so now we have two loops on the needle and then we slide it underneath the two loops plus the tail end and make our new loop so I like the finish 2-2 because it makes a really nice, dense fabric and because it's a fairly intuitive um, stitch to work, I find. Um, it's easy to recognize what's going on with it and it's, um, it's just a pretty easy stitch to work. Okay, so once again, I need to fix my yarn. So I'm just going to slide my loops off my thumb and I'm going to fix my yarn. Okay, so I've now fixed the thread um, on my yarn, or I mean, sorry, I've now fixed the yarn on my needle and now I need to pick this back up again. And then sometimes what will happen is that things will get kind of tight and messed up and you might have something that looks like this, which is no fun whatsoever, but we can work it out. So to start with, we always follow the tail end back. So we're gonna kind of gently pull some of these loops and I'm gonna pull a little on my tail end. Did you see that? That loop right there moved. And now to confirm, yep, that's my tail end. So make sure that's you're certain that that's the loop coming from your tail end and pull it way out. All right, so what else is going on here? Is there any other loops messed up? So now how do we know, what if something happened to the next two loops? So if we pull on this side of the loop, we're pulling on the tail end, but what happens if we pull on this side of the loop? So if we pull on this side of the loop, oh, one of our loops tightens up. And so, and this is only applicable to the top three loops, but each loop will tighten up the loop prior to it. So if I pull on this one, it's tightening up the middle loop. So we're gonna pull a little on the middle loop to bring it up. And then if I were to pull on, and I'm pulling on, off the left side, if I would pull on the left side of the middle loop, it tightens up the third loop. And this is how you can identify each loop. Pull on the left side and it'll tighten up the loop prior to it. Pull on the right side and it's gonna pull, tighten up the loop after it. So the newer loop or the more recent loop made. So we now have, you know that this is the oldest loop, so in the loop number three, this is the middle loop, loop number two, and this is the newest loop, loop number three. And I can now put these back on my thumb, although you want to make sure you put them in order. So newest loop at the bottom, middle loop, oldest loop. And we tighten up that new loop. All right, so the last thing to do is to make sure that we find our back loops. And my back loops didn't get too messed up, so they're pretty much right there. And you can just make sure that you're looking at the correct back loops by tugging a little bit on your tail end, and you'll see that, yep, there's my, there's my back loops. All right, so now I can continue working. So this is pretty much the basics of starting and working finish 2-2. And the next thing you would probably start doing after this is that you might start working your null binding in the round. And that's just going to mean an extra little connecting stitch between the prior round and the current round that you're working on. But I'm not gonna show that in this video.